Let's make this editable now. To do that, we have to implement two more methods. Those are flags and set data. The flags method is called by the view to check some states. For example, when we double click an item, the view will check the flags method if it's editable or not. If it is, it will create an editor for us where we can type in some stuff. Let's implement the flags method to return that the item is indeed editable. Flags self index. We do not care about the index. All we want to do is return that the item is editable. Item is editable. But since we override the old flags function, which we got by inheriting from Q abstract list model, we actually have to supply more flags. And those are Qt core Qt item is enabled, or else our item would be grayed out. And Qt core Qt item is selectable, or else we couldn't select our items anymore. Next is the set data method. We already know what the index parameter is. It contains valuable information about where the item is, such as the row the column and the parent method. The value parameter will be the value we typed while editing the item inside the view. So that means it will be a string. Our goal is to take that string, convert it to a color and assign it to our private list in the edited row. Set data needs to return true or false depending on if the operation was successful. Because you might write some stuff that makes no sense in the edit field. So row equals cute core cute edit row we check if it's edit row and that's also the default row if it is we get the row of the edited item we construct a color from the value passed to us which is a string and hopefully it contains the hex code for the color or for the new color if it does the color will be valid, is valid, so we can override the old color at that row and return true, because this function needs to return true if the operation was successful, or else the view will not update itself. If the color was not valid because we typed some bollocks in it in the editor, we need to return false. Now let's run this. Oh, all of them are grayed out. How come? Ah, I have supplied item is editable twice. It should be enabled. There we go. Now I'm gonna edit this child to FF00FF. It changed itself to purple, which means we were successful, but all the other views didn't update themselves. As soon as I focus them, they update. And that's because the other views has not noticed yet that the data has been edited, so the model needs to shout it out loud. And that's done by emitting a signal called data changed. When we emit that signal, the views that use the same model will automatically respond by refreshing the displayed items. And this is where we do that. Self data changed emit index index. The two parameter it takes is the indices from top left to bottom right. We do not need to care about that because we aren't working with two dimensional structures. Since we're having a multi-editing, we pass the same index to both of them, so it will only tell the other views to update that single item. Let's run this and check if it works. I'm gonna change the color of the green to yellow. Boom, instant update on everything. But there's one thing that disturbs me. When I double click an item, it actually removes the entire line. I'm gonna change that. To do that, 
I want to keep the data. So to do that, we have to go into the data method and then check if it's edit role. If it is, we need the uh, we need to return self on the so and so colors. We need to return the value. And since it displays a string, we will need to return the name or the hex code. And there we have it. Now when I double click, it keeps the data. What actually happens is, when we double click, it creates a text editing field here, a line edit. And then it calls data, and when it sees that we actually support edit role, it returns that name or the hex code and uh, assigns it to that line edit. There you go. You now know how to create a single dimensional data structures in Qt. We will cover inserting and removing of items at runtime in the next tutorial. If you can't wait, just check the Qt documentation on creating models or be patient and wait for the next part. Thanks for watching this tutorial. Stay tuned for more model view programming tutorials for PyQt. Next tutorial will cover Q abstract table model and how we can create table models for multidimensional data structures. We will also continue from where we left off and add inserting and removing functionality for our list models we created today. Best regards and happy coding!